Hi everyone, uh, welcome to another YouTube video. Uh, it's absolutely belting down outside, so I'm not really going anywhere taking any photos. So what I've decided to do is if I come on out to my uh, rather messy little shed, I'll uh, do a little bit of behind the scenes video on how I achieve my uh, mouse images. Uh, discuss a bit about um, what techniques I used and um, various ways that you can remote trigger a camera. Now this this all came about. It started because um, I noticed uh, I usually keep my bird seed and that for the garden feeders in here, and I noticed certain signs of damage, of chewing, and stuff like that. So I knew that there was something in here. So I used an old trail camera, which uh, identified that there were animals coming in and out. Uh, I then went on to use one of these old um, Wi-Fi webcams, so I could just keep an eye and track potentially what times they were coming, what routes they were taking, just to make it easier to get some images of them. And then uh, eventually we um, we were lucky enough to have a free trial of uh, one of these, which is a, a ring video doorbell or camera. And basically it's got motion detection and it can send alerts directly for your phone. So it's very, very useful actually for wildlife photography. You can sight this in the areas where you want. Because it's wireless, you don't have wireless trailing everywhere. And um, what I primarily use it for now is I will sight it where I know that the animals are active and it will trigger an alert onto my phone so that I can then move on to the remote triggering of my camera. Before I go on, I do just want to point out that although I'm using my shed as a controlled environment, so to speak, these are completely wild animals. They come and go as they please. They're not pets. They're not tame. They're not trained. So the results can vary. Right. Normally, I do prefer to use uh, natural lighting where I can. Uh, usually, when the sun's out, there's a nice big band of light which comes through here and it hits the area just down here, which this is where the mice usually access in and out. So quite often there's some quite nice natural sunlight coming across there. Unfortunately, today it's dark and it's dismal, so I'm not going to be able to do that. But for the purposes of the video, I'm going to introduce some artificial lighting to it. Um, I have done a few shots with this, with the mice, so I know that they're not particularly bothered by the lighting, so it's not going to disturb or harm them, and for the purposes of the video I should be able to show you how I'm going to achieve the results. Now, for the various triggering devices, I'm going to talk about three. Three in this video. Uh, the first one I'm going to discuss is the um, it's a saber switch, which is basically it's a PIR sensor which will automatically trigger your camera when something breaks the beam. Uh, it's very useful in camera traps and such. I've I've done a few quite successfully with that. Then they are available to buy online. I'll I'll put a link down below to the guy's website. Alright, so a uh, little bit about using the Sabre switch. Um, basically all you need to do is turn it on the back, you get a little red light to start with. Uh, you need to wait a few seconds, about I think it's 10 or so, until it starts flashing, and that indicates that it's ready. While you're doing that, um, if you just get the extension cable, plug it into your camera's remote trigger port, and set your camera where you want it. Uh, I'm just doing this as a illustrative purpose I would intend the animals to be around about there and all you need to do is hook up your sabre switch which you should see the little there you go the lights flashing now so it's ready um, flashing light indicates it's ready solid light indicates that the beam's been broken so that should theoretically trigger the camera so I would set that up just for example, round about there where I would hope that the animals be coming across the camera range. 
turn the camera on and then theoretically what should happen is every time the beam is broken the camera would trigger like so so if something came totally along here there you go it would set the camera off now the only limitation with that device is uh, you have no control over the focus you would have to set a fixed focus point which if you're using a camera trap or something like a wide angle lens or a very uh, narrow focal aperture that's not such a problem because pretty much everything would be in focus uh, I prefer to shoot wide open as much as I can or as close to just to give a nice bit of blur in front and background so it can be a bit limiting as to what successful shots I achieve uh, nonetheless so if you're into remote triggering or camera trapping it is a great piece of kit and very very useful uh, from what I've hear they have just produced a wireless version as well which would have much better um, capabilities because you wouldn't be tethered with wires but as is in a small camera trap that would be a great piece of kit All right, next one I'm going to talk about using is the trap focus feature on uh, Magic Lantern. Now, if you haven't heard of it before, Magic Lantern is a third-party firmware which can be installed on certain Canon camera models, uh, and it offers features over and above what you'd normally see on the uh, Canon menu, such as trap focus, motion detect, intravolumeter, etc., etc. Um, it is a third party software, it's not endorsed by Canon in any way, shape or form, so it is kind of an install at your own risk type of thing. Personally, I felt the benefits outweigh the um, potential downfalls of it. Um, please, if you're interested in using it, look it up, see what it does, see what it can't do, make the decision for yourself. Okay, so just going to give you a brief run through of how I set up for using the magic lantern um, what I will do is I'll, I'll use an object to set as my focal point I've got a battery just down there at the moment so I'm going to pop it onto live view I'm going to make sure that the battery is in focus as shown by the green indicator light so what I'm doing now is put the camera onto manual focus because it won't work with auto Turn the live view off, remove my battery subject, and select Magic Lantern. There's a whole load of different options on this menu, all of them quite useful. What I'm interested in is the track focus, so I will turn the track focus on to continuous, set it off. It's activated by a half push of the shutter button, so it's active at the moment, half push. Shows that it's idle, half push again, shows that it's active. So then what will happen then, anything that hits that precise focal point will trigger the shutter. Now this one, there we go. I've got it on 1.8 so it's probably a razor thin focal length. But there you go, it's triggering it every time something hits its focal range. So that means that if that is triggered, hopefully anything in shot where the focal point is should be in focus. Okay, the uh, final method I'm going to talk about is using the Canon WE1 Wi-Fi card and the um, Camera Connect remote app. Uh, this is by far my favourite method at the moment because I can have a degree of control over all the camera settings and the focal points and it's, it's much easier to get the shot that I want with this. Alright, so what I'm going to be using for this one then is the Canon Wi-Fi adapter card, uh, the WE1. That's available on eBay, Amazon for something like uh, 30 odd quid. 
uh, it's quite useful to have. I originally uh, bought it to use for a portrait session so that I could uh, transfer my images straight to my laptop wirelessly but I've since found a, a much better use for it with my wildlife. Uh, it's very useful actually if you're a wildlife photographer because it means you can sight your uh, camera somewhere and then move off site and uh, still trigger it remotely. I think it's got a range of somewhere around 20 meters so you could hide yourself away quite nicely and the animals wouldn't be disturbed by your presence. And that would then hook up with the uh, the Canon Camera Correct Connect app, which I'll show you the process now. Okay, so what I'm just going to do now is just show you how to hook up the uh, the camera to your phone via the Wi-Fi card. Uh, camera on. Uh, I've got the Wi-Fi function set in my custom menu because although it's in the camera there it's just easier to set it to your custom menu because you can find it a lot easier when you want to. So you're selecting Wi-Fi function, you want to connect to your smartphone and I want to choose the settings because set one I've got set up to my home Wi-Fi network because that way I can uh, view the images inside the house whilst watching the uh, the remote camera to see when the mice and the animals are active. So if you go on to uh, set two, select easy connection, which is connect the camera directly to the Wi-Fi card. Okay, that will give you the camera's Wi-Fi address and the encryption key. So what you do then is you go into your Wi-Fi settings on your mobile device, and it should search and find the Canon, which there we are. And then ask you for the key to type in. Which is nine six three one nine four. Join. Okay, so there we are. Then the phone is now connected to the camera's Wi-Fi network. So you then go onto your Canon Camera Connect app. It's going to tell you that there's a camera on there so I'm selecting that camera and it'll give you the option to connect to the iPhone which you press OK and there we are we have the connection established and you've got the option to remote live view or view images on camera I'm gonna go for the remote live view shooting so now you're in control of the camera via your phone and what that enables you to do then forgive the image, is select areas on the screen for the camera to focus on. So that will then automatically focus on any area where you put that box over. It also gives you control over the shutter speed, the aperture and the ISO as well. So you can control basically most of the camera functions from there the only thing it won't do you can't do anything with the zoom or anything but that's a physical thing that you have to actually touch uh, the only slight disadvantage of it is I would like the option to be able to focus on something and then lock focus but it automatically focuses wherever the box is but that's a minor niggle you can get around that so what I'm going to do now uh, I'm going to set up a little scene on an area where I know that the mice travel and I'll see what images I get Okay, so set myself up a little scene there. I've uh, accidentally dropped some seeds in the area where they used to fall when I was feeding the birds, and I've just set up a few little pine cones on there. I'm hoping that the uh, the mice will just do a little bit of climbing on there, and it might make a nice shot. But uh, we'll see how it goes because uh, they're not the most cooperative of fellows, but we'll see, eh? Okay, so. Basically the setup I have here now is I've got the view from the uh, the ring camera on there which is set for motion alerts. Uh, when, I, when I get a motion alert what I can do then is go onto my, uh, my remote shooting app and then I can trigger the camera as and when needed. So let's see what, uh, what comes of this.
Okay, so there we go. With a bit of perseverance and patience, I've got a couple of images that I'm really happy with and I've achieved pretty much what I set out to. Hopefully it's given you guys some ideas and some inspiration to try it yourselves. Uh, if you do it, tag me. I'd like to see what your results are. Uh, if you want to give me a follow, I'm on Instagram at Aid Clark or check out my website. Thanks for watching and see you next time.